Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week, 10 days. For today's final video, day 10 will take us to the 4th of uh, December. The day that we're releasing Gals Weather's winter 2022-2023 forecast. By the way, um, <laughs> we'll be able to set out beyond that with the SHGFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we'll around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That will get us towards the run-up to Christmas. And uh, I shall get some of that for you in a moment, just to say that the first video say was our 6am upload. We've also released the uh, European Outlook. Yesterday, we live-streamed our 10 to 14 day. It's an epic, epic live-stream, but it was a slow start, because uh, I had a job to uh, uh, start the stream. Um, but at least said about that, the better. But once we got going, it was a pretty epic live-stream. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for making uh, the live-stream that we did uh, last night absolutely amazing. And we also released the 8th uh, it's sort of a Christmas countdown as well, so check out the stream and the Christmas countdown on demand if you'd like to do that. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, everybody. It's getting very dark here. <laughs> the towers, I think we've got more wind and rain on the way. I don't know. Right, well, let's start off with the setting temperature then. The CT is uh, currently sitting at 9.7. Uh, which is still over 3 degrees above average, and that is provisional to uh, yesterday to the 23rd of November. That's going to finish up somewhere in the nines, I think, but where it ends up, we've got to wait and see. These are GFS upgrade temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So look at Edinburgh today, the red line. Is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Edinburgh? We're starting off around average at the moment. Going to have a bit of a spike in the upper air temperatures over the weekend, but it will be associated with low pressure, bringing wet and windy weather. Um, early next week, looking relatively mild too, but there is a slide in the upper air temperatures going on through the first week into the second week of uh, December. How much of a slide remains to be seen because there is a lot of scatter. Well, uh, within there, so we've got the mild ensemble members up here, got colder ensemble members uh, down there. So this first week, 10 days of December, still causing a lot of uncertainty in terms of whether we bring in uh, colder air from the east and uh, what not. More about that a little bit later on in the video. So days wise it does look drier, so for the rest of November, it's still going to be quite unsettled with more uh, rain to come, although a little bit less so uh, probably even compared to earlier in the month. But as we get through into December, we have got a bit of a drying trend appearing here. So higher pressure will be taking over, I think, into early December. The question is where the high pressure sits and whether it allows anything particularly cold to develop. Temperature anomalies on the 24th of November, 2nd of December, going to be a little bit above average and precipitation anomalies on the 24th of November to 2nd of December. Um, rather drier than normal, especially in central, northern and east parts of the country. I expect those to trend even drier in the coming days. Having said that, the latest wind flow map from Earth, NordSchool.net, shows that low pressure is still in control of the weather at the moment, sitting out in the Atlantic, various low pressure centres, and we've got another active front coming across the country today, bringing further heavy rain and uh, potentially uh, squally gale force winds and uh, what not. So sorry, everyone. Right, so uh, UK Met Euro uh, looks like that for midnight on Sunday. Guess what? Wet and windy. <laughs> That's a surprise, isn't it? So uh, we have another pretty, pretty wet and windy uh, weekend in store. By the time you get through to midnight on Monday, though, most of that wet and windy weather is getting out of the way and low pressure beginning to weaken a little bit in the Atlantic. The trend through next week, then, is to start building up higher pressure over and to the east of the country, blocking off the Atlantic. So by the time you get through the next Thursday, week away, first day of December and the first day of uh, meteor meteorological uh, winter as well, we find that high pressure has taken over to our east. So we're drawing in like a southerly, southeasterly, easterly flow. Technically mild, so from an upper air temperature perspective, but of course that could start um, leading to uh, the gruesome twos of frost and fog by the last stages of next week. Icon, looks like that, once more, wet, windy, uh, midnight on Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. 
And then through early next week, rather showery with this uh, trough of low pressure. Um, takes a little bit long to get rid of a low pressure compared to the UK Met. So even by this time next week, midnight on Thursday, low pressure still sitting in the North Sea. Uh, and we are bringing a rather colder sort of north north type flow as well. Still pretty blocked with Icon. See how got Scandinavian high... Uh, goes back to the Siberian high across northwestern Russia and uh, ridges was green as well, so pretty blocked. Um, but uh, more influence from low pressure with ICAR uh, there, which, um, you know, it's still, it's still cold evolution, but low pressure moves out into the North Sea and we bring down these cold north or northeast winds. It might even be enough to produce a you know, winchiness in the, across high ground in the north and northeastern part of the country. That's a rather different evolution and more unsettled. Uh, for next week. GFS midnight run. Once again, looking wet winding midnight on Saturday to Sunday. That gets our way by midnight Monday and we go into a showery West Sea flow. And then the trend through next week is for high pressure to build over and to the east of the country. So by the end of next week, a big area of high pressure is pretty much covering most parts of Europe. Again, the upper air temperature is relatively mild with that. Depending on whether skies are clear, we could get inversion that produces overnight frost and fog. And I will think there's a growing risk of that, you know, the further on we go with this ridge of high pressure, these very slack weather patterns, there will be a growing risk, I would have thought, up towards day 10 to the 4th of December of uh, a little bit of the gruesome twosome. Now, in the extended range, the uh, GFS midnight run starts to pull in very cold, easy winds. It takes a little while to get there, but eventually this Siberian high sits nicely into Scandinavia, and uh, we start to pull in proper direct easterly winds. So that's how the upper air temperature, temperature looked by the 8th of December, being a minus 5 cells iceberg. Just to notice a nice deep cold pool sitting across much of northern Europe. And look at that, by the end of the GFS midnight run, we are unleashing the beast a little bit there, dare I say it. Um, we've got a 1060 millibar area of high pressure across northwestern Russia and into Scandinavia. We're bringing a direct easterly all the way from the Urals and the upper air temperature show, but the minus 10 cells ice firm is about to start uh, moving in to the eastern side of the UK. That's probably enough to say that it's a bit of a beastly. And uh, it will certainly be, be bringing snow showers into eastern and uh, southern parts of the country on those easterly winds. As I tweeted at uh, six something this morning, I was up early today, as I tweeted this morning, a thing of beauty for cold lovers there. Right, well, GFS 6 there, eh, looks like this. Um, once more, we're very unsettled as we're going into the weekend, so it takes a while to get rid of that wet and windy weather on Sunday morning. It does eventually go, and then we go into a showery, sort of uh, westy type scenario. And then through the course of next week, trying to build up high pressure, a little bit less strongly on the uh, 6 day compared to the Midnight run. Make sure we get this ridge building uh, really across most parts of uh, uh, most parts of Europe. Going to ridge of high pressure. Notice it's 1,060 millibars with the Siberian high. That's a very intense area of high pressure there. Um, when the system comes across the country on Saturday, the third of December, and then high pressure reaches back in. Uh, behind. We're trying to get into high pressure, but it's taking a long while to do so. That's several to get to beyond day 10, which is the 5th of December. Uh, ridge of high pressure through the country connecting back to that intense Siberian height. Again, increasing risk of frost and fog there, I would have thought, through the first week of December. No easterly with uh, the GFS sits there. What it actually does in the end is pulls in a cold northerly. Um, so it does get cold eventually, the uh, sits there, but it does it via a different route compared to midnight run. Then of an easterly, we get a northerly. And uh, very cold northerly as well, actually. Minus 10 cells ice cream gets into northern parts of Scotland. It looks a little bit flimsy there. I'm not sure that's going to be... A much more than a topler type thing um but it does get cold eventually uh but it does it via a different route if you're enjoying the video then please do like share and subscribe thank you so much everybody for doing that why not drop a comment 
let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Worthies. We need to put on 69 subscribers. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know. Da -da -da. <laughs> 69 subscribers uh, will get us to 14.9k. Thank you so much, everybody. For doing that, GM with low pressure in off the Atlantic for wet and windy weather through the weekend and into the early part of next week. That area of high pressure to our north and northeast is desperately trying to take over the uh, weather pattern with the GM, but we seem to lose the influence from low pressures in the Atlantic actually. And as I look as we get to day 10 with the GM, low pressure is somewhere around the Bay of Biscay. We have got low blocking going on there. 1,000 70 millibar area of high pressure over Greenland. It's originating to Scandinavia as well. So, uh, pretty intense blocking. You would look at that and think we're probably going to turn cold. Um, although, up to that point, we're still bringing the wind somehow or other from like a southerly to southeasterly direction. And then the ECM at WF looks like this. Again, wet and windy. Oh, right, Saturday into Sunday. And then through next week, high pressure increasingly taking over from Scandinavia. Look at that. Not very often you see that uh, as your uh, first couple of days of winter chart. Big area of high pressure over Scandinavia. Western parts of Russia. Winds are turning into the east. Not much in way of cold air sitting to our east at that point. So it's just bringing lots of cloud, damp weather, really raw winds, uh, I would have thought. Well, not much in the way of uh, wintry weather. Might be a few wintry showers around those eastern coasts. And up to day 10, that big blocking area of high pressure from Scandinavia to Russia is maintained with those easterly winds as well. Upper air temperatures don't look overly cold. It would be colder on the surface than that suggests. And, uh, of course, the longer the east goes on, the more chance we've got of actually bringing genuine cold air from the east. So we do see but we have got genuinely cold upper air temperatures beginning to gather across eastern parts of Europe. So if that east was to be maintained for another two or three days, for example, we will probably start moving that genuinely cold air from uh, the east of Europe uh, westwards across Europe. Uh, precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tometeo.com looks like this is today's wet and windy weather sweeping across the country, of course. That will be followed by uh, showers and a slightly dry day tomorrow. More rain and wind piling in from the Atlantic as we go into the weekend, Saturday into Sunday, followed again by further showers. And then through next week, the trend is to drier weather. Notice the showers eventually start coming in from the east rather than the west. Um, and again, that is as the wind is turning into east. So a lot of cloud, damp weather, murky weather uh, coming in with these easterly winds as we're moving into early December. Probably increasing risk of fog as well. That's how look as we get to day 10. Showers peppering the southern and western coast. It might be a little bit wintry, who knows. Um, but again, I would have thought a lot of cloud being dragged in with those uh, easterlies. Um, these are up on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. This gets us to the 4th of December. 15 members of the ECM ensembles, including the control and the operation room, with high pressure blocking things out to our north. We're bringing in that easy wind, which is not particularly cold, but certainly would certainly be quite raw. 13. Again, with high pressure to our north and northeast, we're probably bringing winds from an easy direction once more with that. 10, again, with a ridge of high pressure to our west and also to our north. Low pressure over France, winds in from the east. Um, 7, looking a lot milder, high pressure sits over the country just to the east. That'll be bringing it wind more from a southwesterly direction. Of course, there could be frost fog with that. And then uh, six with high pressure slightly to our north, again, suggesting some sort of easterly type influence. Most of the options are involving high pressure at day 10, just how far north high pressure goes and how much of an easterly do we pull in. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This will get us to the 9th of December. 15 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south. That will still be bringing in easterly winds. And by this point, we might be starting to bring 
properly cold upper air temperatures in from the east as well. Ten, take the high pressure out to the west, drop a trough of low pressure in over Scandinavia, and that bring in a northerly. So that will be kind of like what the GFS 6 node is doing uh, at the very end. Uh, another ten just here, high pressure centres around Iceland. Uh, and low pressure over to the south of the coast. That's probably the coldest and most wintry potential option that we've got, actually. That one could actually produce some snow, I would have thought, especially in more southern areas. Nine, with high pressure to our north and northwest. So that's probably going to be bringing quite cold winds from the northeast. Uh, and then seven, we're turning us back to uh, Atlantic weather with high pressure over France, low pressure around Iceland, and winds back in from off the Atlantic, back in from west. Obviously, that is the mildest and most unsettled option, particularly so for the north. CFS B2 finally leaves a 500 millibar hydrologic breakdown into week beers. The first week period takes from the 24th to 30th of November. The final week of November has high pressure reaching free west of Europe up to its blocking feature around the northwest of Russia and northern Scandinavia, setting down. Uh, week two will be the 1st to the 7th of December under high pressure. So, mostly dry uh, with that increasing risk of frost and fog, probably. Week 3 is going to be the 8th to the 14th of uh, December. High pressure, again, sits over the top of the country. So, um, again, probably frost and fog. But not, you'll notice, taking that high pressure Scandinavia or Greenland on this CFS run. So, not bringing in those cold easterly or northerly winds. And then week 4 will be the 15th to the 21st of December, running up to Christmas. The high pressure begins to slip southwards, becomes centred around the Alps, low pressure around Greenland. That's reverting back to a milder west to southwesterly flow. Notice blocking continues to sit there uh, to the north, uh, around um, northern parts of Russia, for example. But uh, up to that point, we are actually turning milder of a run up to Christmas there. So CFS today has backed away from the idea of, uh, of cold winds from the east or north. We shall see what happens. Lots of chopping and changing going on at the moment. Right, if you enjoyed the video then, please you like, subscribe, thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Amazing and incredible. As I said, we just need to uh, get... Possibly just under uh, 70 subscribers to get us out to 14.9k. So if you could give us a sub, it would be amazing. And we thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Right, take a look tomorrow. Going to be epic. Going to start off with the 6am upload. We're going to have Jeremy Friday. We're going to have a 10 to 14 day. We're going to have the ECM Dover 42 day forecast tomorrow evening and then after 10 p.m we'll be live streaming the uh jfs 18 cent aka the pub run so loads and loads going on tomorrow it's gonna be an epic friday i shall see you for all of those updates tomorrow and the stream late in the evening if you're around for that but for today's videos that's all for now and thank you so much for watching bye for now